It is an honor and a privilege to be here uh, with you this morning and spend some time. Uh, I'm extremely excited to get the opportunity to, to, to speak with some of the most influential people um, in the openness movement and the openness, open source community. Um, just to give you a little context on myself, uh, I spent about 10 years doing custom software development, uh, working as a consultant for uh, many of the Fortune 500 companies doing you know, custom line of business development. Been at Microsoft for over 12 years now. Uh, I started as a program manager on the uh, Visual Basic.net team responsible for the editor and debugger. Uh, and today I, I have the opportunity to lead the program management team responsible for the .NET runtime, the .NET base class libraries, the managed programming languages that we develop, so C Sharp, F Sharp, Visual Basic.net, as well as uh, all of our tools inside of Visual Studio for building those kinds of applications, but also building and deploying applications to the cloud. And I have to admit, in my 22 plus years, I didn't actually think I'd ever be standing on a stage under the feather, right? Um, that's pretty cool, especially not as someone from Microsoft. Um, so, you know, in those 22 years, I, I will say that I've had the opportunity to see just a dramatic amount of change. Change in the industry, change in the way um, enterprises think about um, and work with open source, and most importantly, in the last 12 years, change in the way we build software um, and the way we think about engaging with communities, engaging with open source inside of Microsoft itself. And before I get too far into this, I do want to take the opportunity to do a plus one um, from myself uh, and from Microsoft and saying congratulations to the Apache Software Foundation um, on 15 years. Uh, congratulations to the, to the web server project on 20 years and the amazing amount of innovation and change that those two things combined uh, have contributed and affected uh, in the software industry. I'd actually say that the, the proclamation yesterday by the city of Austin of three days um, of being you know, Apache days, that's, that's another testament to just the immense amount um, of impact as an organization you've had. So congratulations and thank you for that. Now, what I'd like to do is spend, some, spend our time this morning talk a little bit about just sort of you know, how we have gone and evolved as a company. Turns out that Microsoft also has just celebrated an anniversary. Uh, early this month represented 40 years as an organization where we started out with this mission of putting a PC on every desk in every house, right? It was a bold mission at that time. And really, it represented the need and the desire to not just put hardware and software in front of people, but to be able to use that to facilitate interaction, communication, and thus innovation um, and improvements in efficiency for everybody, um, whether it's a consumer at home or a business um, or organization at work. Obviously, that was, we've been fairly successful with that. Um, and now it's really a matter of kind of evolving and moving from this PC revolution to an openness revolution. All right, that's fair, better late than never. I get it, we're a little behind. Um, but that really is what we're about now. It really is you know, the fact that this openness revolution is really grounded in those principles of open source and open standards. Um, and that that is what's going to foster innovation over time. And it's core to our success as a software organization and any company that tries to be successful in that space. The last couple of years, the last year, really has shown a lot of, of acceleration in those changes. We have a new CEO who's aggressively pushing um, our open cloud and our open company um, initiatives, and I think that's great. Um, and of course, you know, we talk about, you'll hear me say that the mobile first, cloud first world, you know, that is a, a real thing to us. And that really is, um, at its core, what's sparking us to, to understand and embrace openness and the fact that that is the only way um, we can be successful with that kind of a mission. Just to give you a little bit of a sense of, of how things have changed. I mean, there are a number of things that, that I never quite thought I would expect to see, like, Microsoft partnering with you know, Google and Mozilla on defining the future of the open web. Microsoft engineers contributing significant code, 20 plus thousand lines of code into the Linux kernel. 
Microsoft employees as committers and PMC chairs of software projects in the Apache Software Foundation. Those are all things that, that have happened in the last couple years that really, I think, go to the, the importance and the strategic need and the long-term bet that we as a company are finally waking up to and, and, and acknowledging around open source. Hey, look at that, wrong way. But first, let's take a step back. Let me give you a little bit of context. Um, this isn't something that just happened in the last 12, 18 months. As a company, we've actually been on this journey for about 10 years. Um, started back in 2004. Uh, we had a, a project that was actually sort of done as an open source effort internally. It was called the Wix project. It's a, a Windows installer XML based technology um, that was not owned by any specific team inside the company. It was something that a, a number of folks came together and started developing um, and was used by a number of product teams across the organization. After a little bit of time, you know, and by the way, the whole thing was done on, on their spare time. They weren't even really doing it as part of their core, um, their core job function. They realized this was a great opportunity to go and actually you know, ex do our first foray into a public open source project. Um, so in 2004, we made that project available. Uh, it continues to be an important part of our internal product development is what we use to, to create our installer packages. It's a core part of the Visual Studio product, both for use ourselves, as well as making it available um, to customers to develop with. I'd say, you know, that, that sort of started the wave. In 2005, uh, we created the F-sharp programming language. Don Syme, one of our principal researchers, was the designer and architect of that language, and it started out as a completely open project. And today still is one of the most popular um, pro open source projects that we as a company ha have or have had for a long period of time. Along the way, you know, we, we started getting involved in a number of other interesting um, projects. I'd say, you know, 2007, you know, Microsoft and Samba coming to an agreement uh, was a pretty significant milestone. Uh, I mentioned before the contribution of code to the Linux kernel. Uh, was another big step uh, in that direction. Number of projects since then, um, let's say back, you know, since, you know, and we just continue to accelerate. Today, there's over 2,000 projects on just GitHub and Codeplex alone that are Microsoft projects, and that's only a small set of the overall um, interactions and, and, and work that we do uh, with the open source community. Did I go backwards again? Of course I did. So let's talk a little bit about, one of the important things is that while we may have been a little bit late to the game here, we have also taken the opportunity to really learn from the people on the forefront. We've learned from and, and looked at how, I think it's interesting to see how the, you know, the Apache way has really influenced the way we as an organization um, embrace open source. You know, it's not just about you know, contributing to and, and open sourcing our projects. There's a lot more um, involved. Back, you know, Previously, the idea was if your code was open, you were open. That was it, it was black and white. You were either open or not. There wasn't much more involved in it. Back then also PCs came with floppy disks and modem jacks, right? Um, today, when we think about openness and we think about the openness of the revolution, there are really four key components, four key ingredients to that. Obviously open source, the code being open is part of it. You know, the Apache Software Foundation being the the oldest open source software foundation has clearly you know, paved the way for the, the how to go and do that, how to create um, and, and manage those kinds of things. Open standards is another key aspect of this, right? The, the most of the work that we do developing software systems is really about ensuring and enabling them to interact with each other. Um, if we had to do that as developers by going and just looking at code, we could do it, but it's not the optimal way to make it happen. You really need a consistent set of standards agreed upon across the protocols and across these APIs. And while not a standards board or a standards organization, the Apache Software Foundation clearly, with its approach to encouraging and fostering development around these standards and pushing these standards, has had a big influence there as well. The third component is the individuals themselves, the people. Uh, in the software space, it really is the developers that determine the winners and losers in a space. They're the kingmakers. 
They are the ones that decide which projects, which technologies are going to, to really move forward and be successful. The, you know, the, the influence, the focus, you know, the mantra of the Apache way around focusing on the community, create a great community and high quality code will follow, is really what I think is a great um, vision, a great way of demonstrating the importance of people and the importance of developers um, in the future of the software industry. And finally, interoperability. Today, the users of our software expect to be able to communicate and interact with, with others regardless of what device they're using, regardless of what operating system it's running on, regardless of what type of network they're connected to, and regardless of even what application specifically they're using to interact with you. That's all about ensuring, right, that we are doing things in a, in a very consistent and interoperable way. And the focus of the Apache Software Foundation and its pragmatic approach to licensing and so forth foster that interoperability and, and, um, and the way we need to develop software going forward. So all these things I think are important. These four things are really how we, th we think about this openness revolution. And when you have those four things in place, you can have a very practical and straightforward conversation with folks about how to think about these things. It's the thing that we're seeing, that I'm seeing in my enterprise customers, right? The need for thinking even more specifically about how open source is going to play into their application development process. Because in order to, do, to meet the needs of the customers, of their end users, they have to be able to take advantage of the latest and greatest innovations at the pace that they happen, and open source is the only place that that's possible to do that. As it comes to you know, our relationship specifically, um, there are a number of projects that, that we've already been working with the Apache Software Foundation on. Um, some of them are big, some of them are you know, maybe a little bit smaller. I think you know, Apache Hadoop is an interesting example where you know, we've engaged on that, on that project and the Azure HD Insights service is essentially an Apache Hadoop distribution powered by the cloud, allowing developers to bring the code, the tools, the experiences they have from that product to develop applications that allow organizations to have um, greater insights into their data and derive new value from that. So an example of partnering and you know, being able to build upon um, a project uh, together. In fact, this is an example where um, the PMC chair is a Microsoft employee. We're incredibly proud of that, especially given the fact that that role requires a, a, a just unwavering emphasis on not being partial to any one organization, right? And the fact that you know, we can have an employee that, that can be successful in that position, I think is a great testament um, to, the, to the direction that we're moving. You know, obviously, uh, as a company, we've been a sponsor um, of the Apache Software Foundation for about seven near, years now, I believe. You know, that again is a testament to our understanding and, and, and support and endorsement of the Apache way of doing software development. Another project I want to point out, because it's a little bit different, um, that's also been becoming a key part of, of the way we think about things in our engagement is the Apache Cordova project. Here's an example where as developers are being asked to build applications that run on multiple different devices, multiple different form factors, multiple different user experience models, um, that the only way to do that is to really provide them the opportunity to take a lot of the skills they've developed over the last five, 10 years doing web development and apply them to mobile application and device development. In this case, in the most recent versions of Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2015, we are incorporating Apache Cordova as a first class development experience inside the product. Um, we're contributing back into that project, you know, obviously doing some things around, you know, adding support for maybe some devices that aren't quite as popular as others today, <laughs> Windows phones. Um, uh, but also, you know, contributing back in and ensuring that it's a more, you know, finding the places that um, maybe aren't as glamorous to work on and, and, and ensuring that the developer experience, that inner loop debugging, code authoring, building experience is really first class for everyone, regardless of what device platform you're targeting. It also then sparked us and kind of motivated us to go and invest in a new emulation experience for Android. 
Um, one that was targeted more at the developer of an application running on an Android device than maybe so a hardware provider ensuring that Android One runs well on their device. So we now have, you know, we've introduced a new um, Android emulator uh, that, that will be an open source project as well. Um, I don't think it is quite yet today, but it, I know that's on the roadmap for the project. So again, I think this is just another example of how thinking about not only just, you know, working with a project and um, building around it, working in and contributing to it, but then how that also sparks other efforts that we do to go and expand and help the broader ecosystem um, of software developers. So let's talk a little bit about .NET. Um, obviously something near and dear to my heart. Um, I think the .NET Foundation is, is an interesting example of how you know, we can bring together the, the concept of open source and developer communities and really learning from and taking um, inspiration from the Apache Software Foundation and the Apache way as part of what we did here. Um, back in November, uh, we made some pretty big news when both Scott Guthrie and, and Soma, so Scott Guthrie is the Executive Vice President of the Microsoft Cloud and Enterprise Division, Soma is the Corporate Vice President of the Developer Division at Microsoft. Um, we made an announcement that we were going to take dot, the .NET Core Server Platform and open source it and take it cross-platform, supporting Linux and the Mac operating system. That was huge. The response, kind of amazing. I'll show some stats here in a minute. It's what enabled, at the same time, we also took our existing, you know, the, what we think of as the full framework and changed the license um, for the reference source to make it just more comfortable for others to, to go and not only learn from it, but incorporate that code into their projects. And that's what enabled the tweet that, that Miguel did uh, you know, around improving the mono product by allowing them to feel confident they could use our implementations, look at our source, um, and include it in their, in their efforts. So the .NET Foundation, actually it has an anniversary, I think, maybe it just passed. It's a year old, we announced it um, last April at our build conference. Um, and it really was um, our recognition of an opportunity that we saw in the, the open source and specifically .NET developer communities. So a lot of folks ask, well, why did you create a new foundation? Obviously, you know, we believe that, that a project should go and um, work with whichever foundation meets, you know, best matches what they're trying to accomplish. We saw an opportunity to create a foundation that was focused on .NET and focused on the developer community around .NET and provide that consistent um, ability for people with like-minded needs to go and interact and, and work together. We also saw it as an opportunity to present some new options for people. The .NET Foundation is open in terms of the license you use, as long as it's one that's you know, we feel applies and fits within the, the direction of the .NET Foundation, which is to create a, a vibrant community around .NET that is both um, supportive of commercial and non-commercial investments. So we don't mandate a license. We don't mandate a governance model. We mandate you have one, um, but we want you to pick the governance model for your project that works best with your community. Um, and. And that's really what it's all about. That's why we created it. That's, that's what we saw as the opportunity um, ahead of our, you know, to, to go capitalize on. Now, it has been, we also wanted to go and ensure that we were doing this in the, in the, right, in the right way, in the best way, and not fall back to what people would think of as our classic approach, which was we figure it out and then we go unleash it upon the world. So last year, we started with, um, this, the, the most minimum we could think of, a basic structure for an organization and enough to engage with the developer community to figure out exactly what and shape how the foundation would work. So in the last 12 months, we refined the foundation, we have a set of um, foundation governance, bylaws and so forth that are now been ratified and are available. About a month ago, we formed a technical advisory council for the foundation itself. It's a nine member council that represents technical leaders in the .NET space. Most of them are project owners, specifically of projects in the foundation, that can go and do the next level of work around the ecosystem and community. And then just about a week ago, um, I was excited to announce that we have a full-time executive director now. Uh, Martin Woodward is now the executive director of the .NET Foundation. Um, turns out he, he actually is an interesting 
um, individual. He has more experience in the Java community than he does in the .NET community, um, but we're excited to have him um, around, and, and he's someone that definitely would love to hear from you um, if you're interested in, in engaging with us on, on things. The, the aspect of this that you know, we wanted to go do was really go and ensure that um, you know, we were creating this, this community of like-minded people, people that were interested in the same general area and fostering innovation around .NET. And we've seen that it started to happen um, already. And going forward, we'll continue to define and refine how the foundation helps these projects evolve, helps them cultivate, helps mentor, where mentorship is needed, where promotion is needed, um, and visibility, those kinds of things. I mentioned that when we made the announcement, it was, um, well, I will admit it, it was probably a bigger impact than I even anticipated it would have. A um, couple interesting things happened on that day in November. Uh, the, the announcements around .NET being open source and cross-platform hit number one trending in places like Reddit and Hacker News, which in case you didn't know, don't typically tend to be friendly to Microsoft. Um, and that was pretty amazing. The, as a matter of fact, the, the topic is, I believe, still the most popular topic in Reddit in the programming category. Um, oh, and by the way, it just so happens that at the time, we were competing with little things going on in the world, like landing on a comet, <laughs> um, things like that. And we you know, still managed to go kind of hold our own there. As far as the, the repositories, um, they're actually quite healthy. Uh, all of these are available on GitHub. That's where we do our work now. Um, you see, you know, over 7,400 stars for the CoreFX repo, 1,400 forks, lots and lots of contributions, over 1,800 commits. An interesting aspect of that is over 10% of those, our contributions have been accepted from non-Microsoft developers, non-Microsoft employees. Um, and a lot of them are very, very meaningful. So it's not, you know, little things. It's, it's the big things um, that are coming in, and which is great to see. Even before we had done that, even before we announced open sourcing of .NET and so forth, there was engagement in the open source community from .NET developers. There are approximately 10 projects um, in the Apache Software Foundation that have C Sharp components to them. Again, some big, some small. Um, but it just shows that the, the, it's what sparked us to realize that the .NET developers were ready. They were ready to get into this environment, ready to be part of this kind of openness movement. Um, Of course, for us, one of the most interesting th aspects of this, I go back to the, those four elements that we think about when we talk about openness. It's not just about putting the code open. It wasn't just about moving our, our repo to, to GitHub and making it public. It was about the change that that was going to cause in the culture of the organization. Um, and that's something that we really have pulled from and learned and looked at what, what has has been successful with the Apache Software Foundation, as well as just sort of the Apache way and thinking about how we change the culture of our organization. So it's going from the repo being private behind, you know, only on our corporate network to being public. It's going from moving our entire approach to software development, design, um, code reviews, pull requests, all of that being completely done in the public, being done as part of an open community. The team has done a number of interesting things where we're experimenting with um, live, live design meetings that are broadcast and then recorded for people to look at. Uh, going back to the earlier uh, keynote, I will say we also learned that when you put developers that only have to interact with themselves, uh, they can be a little more, they tend to get a little more direct in their feedback. Um, and so we've had to go and, and foster that change and, and help them realize that, no, you're, you're part of a broader world. You're part of a broader community now, right? Um, really helping them think about that. Something that everybody in this room already knows, but you would be surprised the number of Microsoft folks, that developers that didn't, was when they first realized that those followers were all going to see their pull requests. So rather than five people code reviewing your code down the hall in an office, you had 1,500 people, 15,000 people looking at those changes. Awesome added motivation for the developers to make sure they were really going and, and kind of completing things before they checked them in. Um, 
maybe a little uncomfortable for them, but hey, as a, as a manager, I kind of like that stuff. Um, <laughs> So, you know, that's the way we think about things. That's kind of how we, we look at it. We're really pushing, um, the language team has done similar things. The C-sharp team is now doing the design for the next version of C-sharp um, all on, on GitHub. All, you know, all of the design meeting notes are there. They're an example where they haven't quite matured to live broadcast um, language meetings, uh, but they are publishing all the notes and having conversations about it, and they will get there as well. Um, it's just a learning, it's just an evolution for us. You know, I think that really what this, this represents is that in addition to our, you know, the contributions we've been making, um, and I would say significantly to open source projects, both here at the Apache Software Foundation and beyond, is really what we're, I wanted to kind of help communicate is that this is really our commitment and our belief that by extending our work, creating a cross-platform and open source.net, we're facilitating and enabling the beginning of rapid innovation on that platform using Microsoft technologies from non-Microsoft technologies, creating this open and interoperable um, landscape that allows all of us as software developers to more efficiently, more productively meet the needs of our customers, meet the needs of the users of our software. It's really exciting for me to be here today, to get the opportunity to interact with some of the people that have been the most influential in defining and continuing to refine what we think of as a great way, what we agree is a great way to build software, and that is following the Apache way, right? Focusing on community, and then quality code will follow. In this world of a mobile-first, cloud-first environment, we have to move fast. We have to work together and we have to be increasingly open if we're going to be successful. Earlier I talked about the, the four things we think of as being part of the openness movement, the openness revolution, open source, open standards, people, and interoperability. These are things that are, that are not new to you. These are things that you have, have helped the software industry understand and realize, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to acknowledge that we're listening, we got it. We appreciate it, um, and we're going to embrace it and help work with it. I also want you to realize that Microsoft is committed to being a member of this open community. We, we know it is the only way that we can be successful as an organization. We know it is the best way for us to build the software that, that our customers need, to facilitate the partnerships across the software industry that we need to be successful. Um, and to create just a great and vibrant developer community. So with that, I just wanna say thank you again for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you for the opportunity to stand under the feather for a few minutes. Um, it is really, truly an honor. Um, if you have other thoughts, questions, comments, that's my email address, I would love to hear from you. I, you know, I really think this is an opportunity for us as open source software developers to collaborate and work together right, on the future of great development platforms across all computing technologies, all computing, pla computing platforms that our customers are demanding us to work on. So with that, I wanna say thank you and enjoy the rest of your time.